Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Chao Yang, and uh, I'm very glad to be here to present my re recent research work with Ling Chao. Uh, that is zero short slot fitting with uh, slot prefix prompting and uh, attention relationship descriptor. And let's start. Oops. Uh, I guess um, most of you guys may use uh, the dialogue system like uh, Apple Siri or Microsoft Cortana, Amazon Alexa, or Google Assistant or whatever to check what's the weather tomorrow or you want to ask the system to play, uh, play a music from your favorite playlist or you may want to book a highest rated restaurant nearby. And, uh, but you know, the idea behind those task oriented, oriented dialogue system is to do the intent classification and uh, sort of fitting task first. So the key idea behind this, sort of, uh, the key idea behind this dialogue system is they need to first to understand the key information of your uh, alterance and um, to find what's your intent, no matter you want to ask about the weather or you want to book a restaurant or you want to play music. So let's give you an example. When you ask the dialogue system, what's the weather in Adelaide tomorrow? The first, the, the dialogue system need to do is to identify the intent of this utterance. So here in, in this example, the utterance is to check the weather and um, Based on this intent, then the system needs to do the slot fitting task, which is to find the key slots corresponding to this intent. For example, when you want to check the weather from the dialogue system, you're concerned about the place of the weather and the, the, the date of the weather. So in this utterance, the slot fitting system needs to extract the key information, that is the, the city, which is Adelaide, you want to check the weather from Adelaide and uh, you want to check the weather tomorrow. So that is the date. And um, uh, let me give you a more example about the slow feeling system. So different, uh, so different intent may have different um, slot values. For example, when you want to uh, book flight, then uh, the key slot you concerned may be the person who want to book the flight or and departure place, uh, the destination and the, the date of the flight. And uh, some of the intent may share some common slot. For example, when you uh, want to book a restaurant, you may also concern about uh, who want to book the restaurant. And um, but most of the uh, intents may have different slot types. And um, this is the slot filling task. When you already know the intent of the uh, alterance in the dialogue system, we concern about the specific slot corresponding to the intent. And um, this is quite different than normal text classification task like sentiment analysis. So when you have a sentence or review about a restaurant, you want to just uh, the, the system to get the uh, the polarity of the, the review, but in the slot fitting system, you want to extract more detailed information. So for example, here, once or, once already know that the intent of this utterance is book flight, then the please book a flight from two. These tokens does not contribute to any key information to the, to the system, but me, um, Adelaide, Sydney, tomorrow morning, these are the key information we concern about in this sort of filling task. So in, we can regard this task as a token level classification task. So each token we may have a classes in corresponding to its um, intent or domains. That's the sort of filling task. So um, you can imagine that for this task, if we want to train a good system, we, we need a lot of labeled data to have a good performance on this system. But um, to, to label such a data is quite expensive. So this leads to a, a research 
questions, that is zero shot store filling task. So in the zero shot store filling task, normally we already have, um, we already make sure that uh, the target domain we want, for example, the target domain or target intent, we want this, uh, the system to do is like a book of flight. Then what, are, what we could have is, we, could, we may have some source domain data with rich labeled data, like uh, maybe uh, book restaurant data or play music data. And um, not as we could easily get a pre-trained language model like BERT, or like GPT. Those are very powerful uh, models that can uh, encode a lot of semantic meanings and it, it, it can easily help you to understand the context of your input or any uh, text input. And um, what we might also get is the target label information. For example, here we already know that we want the system to perform book flight intent. Then we could make sure that we're concerned about the departure place, departure place, the destination, the date, the people or number of people who want to book a flight. So the key challenges in this uh, zero shots or fitting task is how do you leverage these, those informations to get a good performance in your target domain. So for example, when you have source domain data, you may think about what kind of knowledge you can transfer from source domain to the target domain. And when you have a pre-trained language model, you may think about how to leverage the existing knowledge has been trained in the pre-trained language model. Or you, when you got the target label information, it's quite different in like a computer vision task, like um, when you have a zero shot computer vision uh, task, for example, to classify, to classify a cat or dog, then you cannot give the model an image about the cat and dog. But in the zero shot uh, um, NLP task, we could have some definition about uh, the label info, about the labels. So for example, we can get easily get the label semantic information uh, from pre language model by, by its label names, sample words, or descriptions. So those key, uh, the, the, another challenge is how you incorporate this uh, information together to get a good performance on your target domain. And um, the existing method on zero short store filling um, um, are using two different uh, methods. So one of the methods is called two-stage method. So basically what they do is in the stage one, they, they use the encoder model to encode the input and identify the position of the slot by the BIO schema. So in this schema, what they do is like, um, as I mentioned, some of the token may not contribute the key information in your, in your slot values. For example, the, those all belongs to other tokens like here, uh, when you want to um, play music or add some music in your playlist, the add this or to uh, playlist, this this word does not contribute key information in your system. So this all belongs to other tokens. And uh, some of tokens are uh, indicated the beginning of a slot and the sum of the token are indicate the inside of a slot. So this method in the stage one, they do the BIO classification task. And in the stage two, they, they use this, um, they, they use the result from the stage one to do the similarity comparison with the uh, slot values. So we are, if we already know that the B is a beginning of a, a slot tab, then we, we, we get the semantic meaning of the artist from our encoder, then compare with the other, uh, the slot values we're concerned about. And um, the key limitation of this method is that um, in the stage one, they don't leverage the information, they don't leverage any information from the uh, sort, sort values. So in the stage one, they're purely, the, 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 the information purely is getting from the uh, source domain, training from, training from source domain. And um, the current state of art method is called, is using, question answering based method. So what they do is they use the pre language model and they, they construct a, a question answering task for this uh, sort of task. 
So basically what they do is for each sort of type, for example, play music, they have, they construct the uh, questions for each slot. For example, what is the music item? Then they concat this input with the utterance. And uh, the task is to, the, the output of the task is to identify the star and the end position of the sort value. So the, um, it's good that this model can encode the label semantic information with the input together and put it into the pre-trained language model. But the key limitation is this method can uh, only process the slot one by one and uh, it does not leverage the information between each slot. And uh, there are some minor issues that is, uh, if there are some, they may, they may some uh, slot, they may, they may output some overlap answers between different uh, slots. And um, uh, in this research work, we proposed a new um, schema called slot prefix prompting structure to do the zero shot slot feeding task. Basically what we do is um, in this schema, we concat, we, we, we concat all the slot values with the user input. And uh, we add some special prompt, what we call the discrete prompt. That is learnable prompt that we use to indicate the other tokens or beginning of slot values or inside of slot values. And uh, we also do the similarity comparison with the with leveraging the intrinsic knowledge from the preaching language models. And um, from, you can easily see that we are, this is a single stage method that we leverage all the sort of values in a single input and uh, there's a not overlap prediction problems in our structure. And um, let's talk about more about this uh, structure. So basically the key contribution of our method is first we propose we propose the slot prefix prompting, and as I mentioned about, and then we also use the attention relationship descriptor and the ARD aggregation model. So as you can see from this graph, in the input stage, once we, if we have a pre language model, we construct uh, the input with utterance and the slot prefix prompting by using a special token to separate the input. And um, we, uh, those, pink values are, are learnable prompt. So, and those uh, orange, orange, orange value are the slot descriptions like uh, slot names. And uh, we propose two different learning schema. One is the, called the prompt tuning schema. So in the prompt tuning, uh, another is the fine tuning schema. The, the key difference between prompt tuning and the uh, fine tuning is that uh, prompt tuning will frozen all the parameters in the pre language model, but uh, fine tuning will fine tune all, all the parameters in the pre language model. And um, what we use the attention relationship descriptor, which is quite different than previous work. In the previous work, they may use uh, they may use the embeddings from the last layer from pre language model, but here we think that um, the attentions we, we know that. For, for the um, pre language model, for transformer-based uh, attention uh, pre language model, it, it has the, um, so it, it will calculate self-attention between each tokens. So we use th those information uh, to do the token level classification task. So for example, uh, we know that bird based model have 12 layers. For each 12 layers, they have 12 hat. So that means, we could get a, a pair of relationship between two tokens with uh, those 144 different relationships. And that's what we used in, um, in our system rather than use the embedding from the last layer. And um, once we get, get such the uh, information, we, once we get the, um, attention relationship descriptor, what we do is, uh, if we want to know if the token is, um, we will also do the similarity comparison between the utterance and the slot values. So the only difference is that uh, here, 
uh, we use the value of, from the attention relationship descriptor, not embeddings. So if we want to know the relationship between one of the token with uh, B artist, then we will use average pooling to uh, pooling to get average value from B and artist. And then we fit it into uh, final, final uh, fit it into a linear classification layer to do the classification task. And uh, we do our experiments on the two, we follow the uh, majority of research work and uh, do experiments on two uh, data set. One is called SNPs. The SNPs has uh, 30, uh, 39 distinct uh, sort types from seven domains. So when we do the zero short uh, sort filling, we use uh, six domains as the source domain and another domain with the as the target domain. And uh, for the top data set, we we use all the SNPs data as the source domain and the top, top data set as the target domain. So as we can see that uh, our, our model, no matter the fine tune model or prompt tuning model, can both achieve the best performance in these two data set. And uh, we also do some ablation study to study the effect of, uh, effect of uh, our um, proposed uh, aggregation modular and uh, and uh, attention descript uh, attention relationship descriptor. From table three, we can know that um, the um, the attention the attention features does much does better performance than the in, using the embedding features. And uh, in the table four, we also examine this uh, on a robot model. So in the robot model, we it it have same uh, indication that using uh, attention features is better than using embedding features. And uh, from figure three, we could know that um, we, we examine different aggregation model that like uh, we don't use any, any, mod, any aggregation model or use MLP as the, as the aggregation model or use a one layer transformer as the aggregation model. And we found that uh, using one layer transformer as the aggregation model performs the best. And uh, we finally analyzed some uh, error patterns in our research that we found that there are three main, um, three main error cases in our study that the first is the, there are some ambiguity uh, in some fine grade slot types in some domains. For example, in the book restaurant, they have four, four slot types called special relation, position, city, and country. And uh, the second issue is that uh, it, it normally focuses on too much, it, it some, sometimes focuses on too much lexical meaning rather than the context. For example, here uh, in this example, the city should be, the, the true label of the city token should be beginning of restaurant name, but here is the prediction to the position. And um, the third one is that we using the store name only this is sometimes this is not enough to just use slot name only. We may need to add more descriptions or add some sampler words could lead to better performance. And finally, uh, the possible future work for the for our, uh, for this research could be that we could use the, um, we could apply this uh, prompting work to other sequence labeling tasks like uh, name and entity recognition or the uh, semantic dependency parsing and. Uh, and I think the attention relationship descriptor can also perform, maybe can perform good on other low resource NLP downstream task. And that's all, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Any questions in the chat? Okay, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>